Welcome to the instructional video on the field installation of the Superior Mixed Flow Grain Dryer. This video is meant as a visual guide to help aid in the installation and erection of the Superior Dryer. Please refer to more specific instructions in the Superior Grain Dryer Field Installation Manual. Let's begin. Here's an overview of the steps in assembling the dryer from the concrete up. Some sections will be repeated and we will make note of that as we go. Some sections are for optional equipment and will be included in a separate installation video. The basics are as follows. Number one, set up the leg structure. Number two, swing the tub section over and attach it to the leg structure and anchor the assembly. Number three, swing and attach the midsection assembly to the tub section. Number four, swing and attach additional intermediate tier sections to the top of the previous section. Number five, swing and attach the roof section to the top of the dryer. Number six, attach all fans, motors, screens, cage, etc. to the dryer. Here we have our concrete pad poured and ready for the dryer. First, we need to mark out where the dryer will go and find our starting point. We will start by setting the center leg of the structure and move outwards, but we need to find our starting point. Refer to section 2.15 of the field installation manual for dimensioning based on your discharge option. Chalk lines for the center line of the center leg as well as the perimeter lines for the leg structure. Unpackage the bundle of the leg structure. The angle braces for angle and the horizontal bracing will be banded to the outside. There will also be a box with the hardware and the leg brace standoffs as well as the tub mounting plates and angles plus anchors and shims for anchoring. We'll start by setting the middle leg of the structure first. Attach two six or eight foot straps around the top of the leg as shown using a sling hitch technique. Lift the leg up from the stack and swing it over to the center line as our starting point. This doesn't have to be perfectly on the line, but the closer you are with the structure, the easier it will be to get the final set on the tub structure as the completed tub and leg assembly starts at around 15,000 pounds. Do not anchor any legs to the concrete until the tub is attached and all the legs are leveled and straightened. Begin by attaching a leg brace standoff to the bottom of the legs on both sides. The flange should be facing to the outside of the dryer. A note on the hardware for the legs. Use the longer half by one and a quarter inch bolts for the standoff brackets and the half inch by one inch bolts for attaching the braces to the standoffs. Do not attach a standoff to the upper portion of the center leg. Attach a horizontal brace to both sides of each leg as this will give you proper positioning for the next leg. Refer to section 3.3 in the manual for proper layout of the leg assemblies. Next, grab the next leg from the stack and swing it over to either side of the center leg. Drop it in place close to where the horizontal brace will end up. Install the standoffs again at the bottom on both sides of the leg. Attach the horizontal brace to the standoff at the bottom. The legs can be tapped in place with a good solid foot tap, making sure you have steel toe boots and making sure the top is supported so it doesn't tip over. Next, attach a standoff brace in the top holes of the newly set leg on the side facing the center leg. Attach an angle brace from the top of the newly set leg to the bottom of the center leg. Refer again to section 3.3 to make sure the configuration is assembled correctly. The angle brace configuration is all symmetrical from the center. After setting the second leg and attaching the bracing, leave the hardware finger tight and attach another set of horizontal braces to the other side of the leg and swing over the next leg. Attach this in the same way as the previous leg. When you set the end leg, go back and start setting the legs on the other side of the center in the same manner as before. Switching position of the angle bracing. Again, refer to section 3.3 for the correct configuration. The standoff brackets can be tightened to the legs at this time. Take the flat tub mounting straps and put a single bolt through the strap and the leg, allowing the strap to be rotated to make the tub installation easier. Using the lifting techniques laid out in sections 4.1 and 4.2, attach the lifting brackets to the tub section. Make sure the head of the pin is to the outside of the bracket so it won't interfere with the sidewall of the dryer. Best practice would be to use a spreader bar, but if you are using long enough straps, make sure to use strap protectors and to avoid the cutouts in the top of the section. Failure to do so may cause the strap to get cut under tension and cause the dryer to fall, risking injury and or death. Swing the tub over the leg assembly, paying attention to the discharge end to make sure the dryer is properly oriented. Remove the hardware for the platform kickers on both ends of the tub to make installation easier. One corner will typically be closer or lower, so pick a corner and start working around, lowering the tub as you go. Use alignment punches to lift the straps up to the dryer as needed. You will need to remove the hardware in the corners of the tub, as well as the seam connections to mount the straps. You can reuse the hardware. 
Only remove the hardware from the section you are working on as you go to prevent the tub from separating. After all the straps are attached to the tub and the legs with all the hardware required, it is recommended to lift the entire assembly off the concrete to allow the legs to shift to where they need to be naturally. Tighten the straps to the tub and the legs, then tighten the angle bracing and the horizontal bracing. Slowly lower the completed assembly back into position on the concrete. Install the tub angle brackets on the inner panels of the tub and to the legs as shown. Reinstall the hardware removed from the platform kickers earlier. Using a 5 8 inch anchor bit on a hammer drill, drill in four anchors per leg. Make sure the legs are level vertically, and if there are gaps between the feet and the concrete, use the provided shims to level the legs before anchoring. Installing the staircases can be done at any point, however it is strongly suggested they get installed next as it makes traversing the dryer easier in the assembly process. Lift the staircase in place and either have someone really tall on your crew reach up and attach the bolts, or have a second person on the platform to attach the bolts to the top. Level the staircase and tighten it to the platform. Follow section 4.6 to assemble the staircase handrail. Mount the post to the staircase first, then attach the handrail and splices as shown. Do this on both ends of the dryer. Make sure everything is level and straight and tighten the handrail and posts. If the staircase does not land on the concrete, use the provided kickback bracing to mount it back to the concrete and block up the bottom of the staircase for best results. Attach the lifting brackets to the section as done previously. Again, use a spreader bar or use strap protectors and avoid the cutouts at the top of the section. Swing the section up and off the trailer but keep it low for now. We have to remove the shipping boards from the bottom flanges of the section. They are screwed through the mounting holes with 5 16 inch head screws. Remove the boards from the side and end flanges as well as on the inside flanges. Keep the section low and have someone support the section so it doesn't move around as you remove the shipping boards. Make sure no hardware is attached through any of the mounting holes on the end flanges. Remove if there is. Begin swinging the section over, paying attention to the orientation of the section as you do. The ladder is continuous up one side, so match the ladder up when orienting the dryer. Have two people standing in the inner column of the tub with alignment punches to guide the section down. Using tag lines to keep the section from moving too much, lower the section down lining up the flanges on the outside and the inside. From the inside, the punches will help guide the section into place as it comes down slowly. Once the inside flanges are set down and the outside flanges set down without any obstructions, you can fasten the sections together. On the outside, a man in a man basket can go around the outside and put bolts in the flanges and also remove the lifting brackets from the section just set. On the inside, install the plenum cross bracing in the same pattern as the sections below. Do the same for the plenum X bracing. On the outside, make the connection between the ladder sections using the ladder splices found in the connection kit hardware box. Repeat this process for any additional intermediate tier sections. If the roof has the gravity fill option, you need to install the gravity fill to the roof before swinging the roof section. Slide straps through the ducts to cradle the gravity fill and lift it onto the roof section. Remove any shipping boards that may be installed on the gravity fill. Slowly lower the gravity fill onto the roof and again guide it into place with punches. Once the gravity fill is set down and the holes are aligned, have one person go inside with the serrated flange nuts and another person pushing bolts through from the top side. Once the gravity fill is secured, attach spreader bars and the lifting brackets and attach the lifting brackets to the roof. Swing the roof just like the previous sections, paying attention to the orientation of the ladder to match the previous sections. The ladder cage consists of hoops and straps, with the entry section having a larger hoop and entry straps with offsets. Hardware included has truss head bolts used for assembling the cage and standard bolts for mounting the cage to the ladder. Always push the truss head bolts from the inside out to prevent snag points on the inside of the cage. Begin by assembling the hoop halves together using the outside four holes in the overlap of the hoop. It is easiest to assemble the top section of cage and lift it with the crane and add to the bottom as you lift the section up. The entry cage section can be built with the offset straps attached to the entry cage. The top cage section will have four offset brackets that attach to the top catwalk while the remaining sections attach directly to the ladder. Note that too much pre-assembly creates some extra work. We recommend starting at the top and building it by adding to the bottom as you lift the cage up. When the cage is assembled, have a person on the top catwalk guide the cage over and attach the brackets to the catwalk. Make sure you use a harness for safety. The cage can now be attached to the ladder working your way up or down by attaching the cage to the side of the ladder. Lift the fans by attaching a strap to both sides of the fan shaft and cradle lift the fan over to the end of the concrete pad. 
Note the orientation of the fan housings by referring to section 13.1 in the installation guide. The round fan shroud will point away from the center leg. Once the fan is in position underneath the dryer, either by brute force or using rollers or a pallet jack, they can be hoisted into place to be attached. Using a come along or a chain hoist on each side, lift the fan into position using a punch to guide the fan into its final position. Attach the fan using half inch hardware included in the fan installation hardware. Once all the fans are installed, the fan filler plates need to be installed from inside the dryer. Slide the filler plates into position and use the supplied self-drilling screws to attach the plates. Install the motor mounts as per section 13.4 in the installation manual. Note the motors will all be on one side of the dryer. Make sure when installing the motor mount standoffs to the motor mount, they are installed in the lower position for proper alignment of the belts and pulleys. Install the slide channels on the front and back of the motor mount as per section 13.4. Install the bolt stop and the motor mount motor plate. Installation of the motor pulley is easiest before the motor is set in place. Pre-install the split bushing to the pulley and line the keyway up and install the pulley onto the motor. Pre-install the split bushing to the fan pulley. Clean up the shaft on the fan with emery cloth and slide the pulley onto the fan shaft. Lift the motor into place using a come along or a chain hoist and install the motor to the plate using the supplied hardware. Check final alignment between the two pulleys moving so the faces are square. Tighten the pulleys down and install the belts. Tension the motor using the tensioner bolt on the motor mount slide plate. For the 2 to 1 discharge, get it into position under the two conveyor outlets and using safe lift procedures, have a couple guys lift the assembly into position and guide it with punches. After getting a bolt in on each side, the discharge will be able to hang safely. Install the rest of the bolts in the front and the sides of the discharge. The back does not need to be bolted. Use silicone to fill any gaps in the discharge assembly. In the fan screen kit, find the upper and lower brackets. Refer to section 15.3 for additional information. Attach the top brackets to the bottom of the tub and square them up as you tighten them. The bottom brackets are lefts and rights and will get installed to the legs. Once the brackets are attached and tightened, the screens will drop in the bottom brackets and hook into the top brackets. Mount the end guards to the legs and fans using existing hardware as per section 15.2 in the installation manual.